Hello everybody. Today I am going to talk about technique oligonucleotide ligation assay or OLA PCR. This technique is a unique technique to detect point mutations. In this technique we can detect for example 45 point mutations in just one reaction. So in terms of max, uh, multiplexity, this technique is a very uh, promising and a very informa informative technique. This technique is based on ligation detection of probes. Suppose a situation that we have a white type allele with A and a mutant type with, for example, G. This alteration of A to G is our mutation. And we want to detect this mutation, for example, in a patient. In this technique, we have two probes. One of them have a T nucleotide on its three prime position. This T is attached to A, the normal allele in white type allele. This probe attached just to this position. We have another probe that attach adjacent of the first one. This probe is started from the nucleotide that is the next one of the mutation position. For example, if we have an A nucleotide or an a G nucleotide, the second probe has a C in its first. It is obvious that the red probe could attach fully to the white allele, but when it wants to attach to the mutant allele, there is a mismatch at the end point of the first probe. So, if we add both of probes to a wild and, a two, and to a mutant allele, and if we add ligase enzyme, just these two probes can attach to each other, but this one cannot attach <coughs> to this probe because of its mismatch. So, this ligation step is the key element in detection of OLA technique. So if we have a white type allele, we could have a unique probe that is consist of that it consists of the probe one and the probe two. But when we have a mutant allele 
for example g type in our example ligands cannot attach the first and the two prone so after the ligation step in white type allele we have this unique combination between two probes the next step in OLA or ODA PCR is to add primer 1 and primer 2 one of these problem is labeled by a fuller form when we add both of the primers just the PCR reaction could be done when we have a unified template in our example the first one in this situation we have a unified template that is consist of the probe 1 or the red one and the probe 2 uh, or the green one in this example for example when we have a G mutation we don't have a unique or unified template because both of the probes are single and they are not a unified template template so when we start the PCR reaction we have a PCR product that is labeled by for for when we have a normal or a wide type allele in OLA or OLA PCR technique we need a control or a reference sample that is from a healthy person who has not mutation and both allele in this person is white type alleles so we do the same technique in the control sample we add probes to control sample we do the ligation step and we do the PCR step with the universal primers that one of them is labeled by a fuller form so in this person in this sample we have two alleles that both of them are normal so we have this amount of PCR product this amount of PCR product are used uh, as a control in OLA PCR technique when we have done the PCR step we analyze the amount 
and the size of pre PCR products by fragment analyzer equipment. Fragment, fragment analyzer equipment is a set that could measure the size and amount of PCR product or any kind of DNA that is labeled by fluorophore. For example, in OLA technique, we have PCR products that are labeled by fluorophores. So, we use the control sample as a reference. As I mentioned before, in control sample, we have two normal alleles. So, when we measure the amount and size of the PCR products, we have a kind of graph in fragment, analyze, fragment analyzer. For example, size of 100 base pair and this amount of folder for or this amount of PCR product. We use this graph as a control. Then we have some test DNA or some case DNA and we want to analyze the genotype of the test DNA we compare the amount of test DNA PCR product with our control for example if we have a heterozygote genotype like this sample a person who has a Y type and a mutant type allele so we have just one allele that produce that produces this template so we have just half amount of DNA in comparison with the control one control test the first one if we have a situation where we are analyzing a homozygote a healthy homozygote test it is clear that we have two normal allele that in ligation steps could produce a unified template for PCR production. So when we do PCR, we have the same amount that we have in a healthy control. So, if we have a, a homozygote, a healthy homozygote person, I'm sorry, a allele, who has two normal allele, we have, we should have the same amount of DNA product as the control one. Imagine a situation where we are testing a patient who is a homozygote one who has two mutant alleles. 
for example in this situation we have a patient who has G alleles when we have this condition in the ligation step because of these mismatches here and here we could not have a unified DNA composing of the one and two probes so in this situation we could not have any PCR product and when we analyze the amount of PCR product in fragment analyzer we don't have any PCR product so by compression comparison of amount and size of DNA fragments in test DNAs in test patients in test uh, people with a control one we can clear cl clarify the genotype of all three conditions as I mentioned before in OLA PCR technique we can detect many mutation just in one reaction that I'm going to teach uh, this feature of this technique in another video have a nice time goodbye